Hello everyone, this is Mr. Fridoff. I'm gonna get through pedigrees in this section. I know it's a short section, but I'm going to go over both the biology and the AP sections here and tell you how to get through these pedigrees. Um, but these are pretty basic. And if you've seen these before, these are pedigrees. Uh, we're not talking about the dog food pedigree. We're talking about genetic pedigrees. And this is just basically a family tree that records and traces how certain traits are passed from parent to offspring. You're gonna notice these pedigrees have a bunch of squares and circles. And then some of them are shaded in, some of them are not shaded in, and some of them are half shaded in. We're going to talk about why they are, they are that way. But this generally is a pedigree. You can see we have a P generation, an F1 generation, and F2. So you can see how this family tree or this pedigree shows how traits are going to be passed on from parent to offspring. Now, first thing we'll go over is the fact that males are squares, females are circles. You can see males here are squares, females here are circles. Uh, shaded in people have the trait. So in, in these cases, the affected male and the affected female have a certain trait. We don't know what that trait is, but right now it's just, we're just saying, hey, they have that trait. So when you see affected, that means, hey, they have that trait. If we're talking about blue eyes, that means that these people would have blue eyes. If we're talking about blonde hair, that means these people have blonde hair. Whatever the trait is, color blindness, uh, sickle cell anemia, whatever, it's gonna have that trait or that person's gonna have that trait. If they're a carrier, they're usually going to be a heterozygous, so big A, little a in this case. Carriers have the trait, but they don't express it. So they are heterozygous. They have one big A and one little a. Unaffected males and females, you can see here, don't have the trait. These are usually going to be homozygous dominant, but we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Uh, lines between individuals represent the couple having an offspring. You can see here, there's this is marriage line. We have the male and female. I'm sorry, the, ma uh, the female and male here. Um, these are the offspring below the parents here. So this is like the mom. This is like the dad. This is the son. And this is the daughter. You can tell these two are brothers and sisters. And then sometimes they also give you other things like the generation number. And I'll show you some other ones later on. But uh, yeah, these are this is a pedigree. This is a small pedigree. And it shows how parents are going to pass on certain traits to their offspring. Now, with these traits, we talk about mostly uh, like disorders. So like traits that have um, something, I don't want to say bad, but um, just a disorder that, that is going to be associated with them. In recessive traits, people are going to have to be homozygous recessive to be shaded in here. So this person we automatically know, I'm going to move my video here, is a little a, little a. It's shaded in. We know this is a little a, little a. That means all of these other ones are going to have at least one big A. You might ask, well, why couldn't they be little a? So, or little a, little a. You, so this one right here, why couldn't this one be little a, little a? The reason is if it was little a, little a, it would be shaded in. We know it's not shaded in. So this one has to have at least one big A and all of these will have one big A. Now, if, it's, if it has one big A again, it's not gonna be shaded in. It might be big A, big A, or it might be big A, little a. Hmm, how do we know? Well, remember, these are the parents, mom and dad. This is little a, little a, this is the daughter. Remember, you get half your genes from your mom, half your genes from your dad. You got a little a from mom and a little a from dad. So in this case, both parents are gonna be heterozygous. You would split this in half and you would shade half of this to show that this is a carrier. So these guys are heterozygous for this trait. Now down here, if we do the Punnett square between these two parents, these two genotypes, so again, this is big a, little a, big a, little a. You could be big A, big A. You could also be big A, little a. We don't know. In this case, if you are big A, big A, or big A, little a, and you don't know, the only correct answer is big A question mark. You might say, well, Mr. Pradoff, you know, it, it, it's more likely going to be big A, little a because of the Punnett square. It is, but we just don't know. We don't know this one for sure right now, so it's going to be big A question mark. Here's another uh, one that we, you, uh, we can kind of go over real quick. Remember, we start off here with saying, hey, these are all little a, little a. So we put these in for the shaded ones. These have at least one big A. So it goes big A, big A, big A. What's the second uh, letter here? What's the second allele? Well, I know that this is little a, little a. We had to get one little a from mom. We had to get a one little a from uh, dad. So this one's going to be big A, little a. And these two offspring had to get one uh, little a from mom. So these two are also going to be heterozygous. There will be no question marks in this pedigree. Now, uh, the now I always tell my students, shut your brain off, reset, and think about this differently. Dominant traits occur when you have that when you have at least one big A. So again, these can be big A, big A, or big A, little A. That means these unshaded ones are going to be little A, little A. So I always tell students start out with a little A, little A's now. So again, 
flip flip your brain off, you know, just for a second, turn it back on. These now are going to be the little a, little a's. These here have the big a's. Now, we don't know if this could be big A, big A, or big A, little a, but in this case, we do, because remember, this is little a, little a. You get half your genes from your mom, half your genes from your dad. So this is, has to be big A, little a, because if it was big A, big A, this one here would be sheeted in. So this is big A, little a, big A, little a. This one is going to be another big A question mark. So we don't know if it's going to be big A, big A, or big A, little a. Do the Punnett square between two heterozygotes. We don't know if it's going to be big A, big A, or big A, little a. So this one's again, big A question mark. Now, whenever we go through this with... Uh, my AP students, we go over usually the same stuff, but I also show them that they can have, show you here, that they can have X linked. So we, we can look at this through like sex linked genetics where we have the X linked dominant. And in this case, you have to be either a male or female that has at least one big H or an X linked recessive, where in cases of females, you have two little H's and males, you have one little H. And you can see how these Punnett squares you can see where like the, the son gets it from the mother and then the, uh, the, uh, the, the father here is going to pass it on to his daughters here, but not his sons. And then the X-linked recessive here, we can see here where the father here has it. Um, the, so does the uh, uh, daughter here. And you can see that the mother is always going to pass it on to her offspring then. So this is an X-linked recessive. Now you can also have a Y link. Then we put a little zero here for the Y and you can see how the Y is always passed on to the sons, but not the daughters. This is just a little bit different than what we go over in biology. It's a little bit more complicated, but uh, you both biology and AP biology will have to do uh, uh, worksheets on getting through a Punnett square, or not Punnett square, a pedigree. So um, if you have trouble with these, go back and rewatch this and try to figure out, remember, half your genes come from your mom, half your genes come from your dad. I can't stress that enough.